when the United States declared independence in 1776. Its flag had only 13 stars. These stars represented the 13 states. But almost 250 years after its independence, when the United States hoisted its flag on the moon, it had 50 stars. How did these 50 stars become part of the American flag? And what was the Monroe Doctrine that made America a superpower? In this episode, we will show you the story of America's expansion. In 1814, the Second War between the United States and Great Britain ended. The American nation considers this war its second war of independence. Now the United States has entered a new era. The US was transforming. The other countries in the region were also changing. North and South America were also transforming politically and geographically. In this changing world, the United States was trying to determine a new role for itself. It wanted to be a regional policeman. It all began in the 1820s. It affected the entire region from Mexico to Argentina, known as Latin America. Spain and Portugal were controlling this region before. But in the 1820s, these countries became independent. It was a great revolution. For the first time, the European powers had lost influence in the region. Still, there was a problem. The European powers could still reoccupy these countries. Because the newly independent countries were weak. Those countries were not politically stable either. Now the US has decided that it will protect these countries. It decided to counter any future European aggression in the region. The US government announced this policy as the Monroe Doctrine in 1823. The Monroe Doctrine was issued two years after the independence of Mexico. President James Monroe issued a policy statement on December 2, 1823. It was a foreign policy statement for the US Congress. This statement was called the Monroe Doctrine. The Monroe Doctrine had four points. First point, America would not allow European powers to occupy lands in North or South America. Second point, if a European power attacked a country in the region, the United States would consider it an attack against America. Third point, the US would remain neutral in European conflicts. Fourth point, the US would not intervene in the remaining European colonies in the Americas. Note, the European powers still had some colonies in the region. So, these were the four points of the Monroe Doctrine. The Monroe Doctrine was an important step towards making America a superpower. This doctrine had given America an important role in the region. The Monroe Doctrine was the result of political changes in Latin America. This doctrine helped America become a superpower. But only policy statements don't make a country a superpower. A country needs strong manpower and intelligent leadership to become a superpower. Large areas, natural resources, vast maritime territory, a strong economy, and a powerful army are the five pillars of a superpower. But America's resources were still not enough. America's lack of power made the Monroe Doctrine unimportant. America was a much smaller country at that time. Only 13 colonies and Louisiana Territory were part of the US. The American Territory ended in Montana and Wyoming states. Oregon Country, or Oregon Territory, lies west of America. It was a disputed area. The US and the UK jointly controlled it. This area was not yet officially part of any country. The area beyond Louisiana and Oklahoma in the southwest of the United States, Texas, and from there to California, was not under US control. This area was part of Mexico. California and Oregon territories blocked the US access to the Pacific Ocean. Therefore, the United States had a limited maritime territory. America was connected only to the Atlantic Ocean through its east coast. In addition, it bought Florida from Spain in 1819. The Florida Purchase expanded America's maritime and land territories. But it did not get to the Texas coast. The Texas coast was still part of Mexico. So America's maritime and land territories were not enough. In addition, America did not have a strong military. 
In the 1820s, the United States had a small regular army. In fact, it had no proper standing army. America had only 10,000 to 15,000 regular soldiers at that time. These soldiers only defended important forts and cities. The states had their own militias. When any war started, the states provided volunteers for the army. The states did not want a large American army. These states had so much political authority. They did not want the federal government to keep a large army. In addition, the US did not have enough resources. So it could not afford a powerful army. The US had no powerful navy either. It had no naval fleets or patrolling ships. Now the US government has decided to expand its military power because it could not become a great power with limited resources. The US government realized they needed more land and resources to build a large army and naval fleet. The government wanted to create a powerful economy to maintain a professional regular force. The American leaders were also considering another option. They wanted to get access to the Pacific Ocean in the West. They knew that if they got access to the Pacific Ocean, they would greatly increase their maritime territory. So they increased their efforts to reach the Pacific Ocean. But it was not an easy task. We have already shown you that America did not control Oregon Territory and California. So its access to the Pacific Ocean was difficult. So now the United States faces two challenges. The first challenge was to control California, and the second was to control Oregon Territory. America was soon successful in the first challenge. First of all, it got the entire territory of Texas without any war or bargaining. Actually, Mexico made a mistake that made this success possible. Texas was a large region when Mexico gained independence from Spain in 1821. Texas became part of Mexico after independence. Four other states in America were also part of Texas at that time. But Texas had only a small population. Mexico invited white people from America to live in Texas. Americans settled in Texas. And within a few years, a population was larger than the local Mexican population. These Americans also had disputes with the Mexican government. Slavery was the major reason behind these disputes. Mexico banned slavery after independence. But the American people in Texas supported slavery because they needed slaves for their farms. So they rebelled against the Mexican government. The Americans declared the independence of Texas in 1836. The Mexican army attacked the Americans, but could not retake their land. Texas became a free state. So the Mexican decision to invite the American people to Texas proved a mistake. This mistake destroyed the unity of Mexico forever. Now the Americans were ruling over Texas. These were the same people who had come from America to Texas. But now these people wanted to join their motherland, the United States. They asked the US government to include Texas in the United States. But the US government did not want to include Texas in the Union because of some political issues. One of the major political issues was slavery. Slavery was causing controversy. Many northern states had abolished slavery. But slavery was still legal in the southern states. Many US politicians were against slavery. They did not want to include Texas in the US because slavery was still legal in Texas. So Texas could not become part of the US for some time. But the supporters of slavery in the US government finally won in 1845. They forced the US government to recognize Texas as a slave state. Thus, the US effortlessly controlled Texas. The United States won Texas without going to war with Mexico. American citizens had made this possible. This was a great victory for the United States. This victory gave America another success. The U.S. also occupied California because of a disputed area in Texas. When Texas joined America, a legal problem remained. The border between Mexico and Texas was still disputed. There was no agreement on it. It was a large area between two rivers, the Rio Grande and the Nueces. 
The United States claimed that the Texas border extended to the Rio Grande. It meant that the entire area between Nueces and the Rio Grande was part of the United States. Mexico claimed that the Texas border ended at the Nueces River. They claimed that the area up to the Rio Grande was part of Mexico. U.S. President James Pollock offered Mexico a deal to end this border dispute. He offered to buy New Mexico and California from Mexico. He offered to pay $30 million to buy these areas. But Mexico rejected this offer because it did not want to sell its land. It refused to sell even an inch of its land. The U.S. president then decided to take the land by force. But it was not easy to start a war with Mexico. America needed an excuse to start a war. It wanted to prove that it was not starting a war to occupy the land. It wanted to show that the Americans were fighting for justice. Now the US president has sent troops across the river nooses. These troops patrolled in the disputed territory. The US military also built a fortress near Brownsville at the Mexican border. The US troops began patrolling the disputed area. Mexico also responded with force to this American aggression. It also sent troops to the disputed area. The American and Mexican troops clashed on April 25, 1846. Fourteen American soldiers died in the fighting. The clash gave the U.S. president the excuse he wanted. He declared before the U.S. Congress that Mexico had invaded American territory. He blamed the Mexican troops for having shed American blood on American soil. He asked Congress to declare war on Mexico. Congress agreed with the president and declared war on Mexico. Thus, a war began between Mexico and the United States. The U.S. military entered Mexico from various locations. A portion of the U.S. military entered Western Mexico and advanced toward California. Another force advanced into Mexico from Texas. The U.S. Navy launched an attack on Mexico from New Orleans. All three attacks were successful, and the Mexican army was defeated everywhere. The United States occupied entire western Mexico up to California. It also occupied many areas that are now part of present-day Mexico. The U.S. naval fleet was also successful in Mexico. It attacked the Mexican port of Veracruz. The U.S. forces landed in Veracruz. Then they advanced towards the Mexican capital, Mexico City. In September 1847, a fierce battle broke out between the Americans and the Mexican troops to control a fort outside the city. Defending the castle is a memorable event in Mexican history. Five young Mexican cadets fought the Americans to the end. They sacrificed their lives for their country. A sixth grade military cadet saw the Americans entering the fort. He wrapped the Mexican flag around his body and jumped down from the fort wall. He did this to protect his country's flag from U.S. invaders. Today, these six military cadets are called the Children Heroes. When these cadets died, the Americans occupied the fort. When the Mexican forces in Mexico City heard the news, they evacuated the city. When the Mexican army retreated, the Americans waved their flag over Mexico City. When the U.S. troops occupied Mexico City, the Mexicans decided to end the war. They began talks for a ceasefire. On February 2, 1848, both countries signed a ceasefire deal. Mexico recognizes Texas as part of the United States. It also gave more land to the United States. Mexico surrendered 1.3 million square kilometers of land to the United States. But in this war, the Americans got another success that they had been waiting for since their independence. The United States took control of California. It meant they had now reached the shores of the Pacific Ocean. This was a journey of more than 4,000 kilometers from the East Coast to the West Coast. The United States had covered this distance within 72 years of its independence. The dream of making America a great power had finally come true. The United States now has access to two oceans. These oceans gave the United States access to three continents. Through the Atlantic Ocean in the east, the United States came closer to Europe and Africa. Through the Pacific Ocean in the west, 
it could easily reach Asia, China, and Japan. Interestingly, the United States gained land access to the Pacific Ocean not only from California, but also from the Oregon country. In 1846, America signed a deal with Great Britain on the status of the Oregon country. This deal ended joint US-British control over Oregon territory. This area became part of the United States. From the current state of Washington to California, the entire Pacific coast is now part of the United States. Britain and Mexico had relinquished their claims over the coast. Ironically, after the annexation of Mexico, the United States paid $15 million to Mexico. America's first offer to Mexico for this territory was $13 million. But obviously, after the war, Mexico was not in a position to demand more money. Because it had lost the war, the United States returned some territory to Mexico, including its capital, Mexico City. But it deprived Mexico of its one-third territory at gunpoint. Now, a smaller Mexico is not a problem for the US anymore. This was the successful plan of the American leaders. This planning helped the United States become a superpower. When Mexico was surrendering California to the United States, $15 million only. A carpenter, James Marshall, found $2 billion in a river in California. How did he do that? Look carefully at this wheel and planks. This is the place where the carpenter James was standing. The site was originally a wooden workshop or sawmill. This sawmill was operated with the force of water. James worked at this mill. On January 24, 1848, James saw something shining in the river. He noticed there were small particles of gold scattered in the water. The news spread like wildfire from coast to coast in the United States. Millions of people from all over the United States moved to California to find gold. Everyone wanted gold. This period is called the Gold Rush in American history. At least 300,000 people from different parts of the United States settled in California during this period. The California Gold Rush lasted for at least seven or eight years. Two billion dollars worth of gold was mined from rivers. It looks like nature is also helping the US become a superpower. This wealth supported the American economy. Now the US could easily afford a large and powerful military force. Now the US had taken California and Oregon Territory. It had also reached the Pacific Ocean. But the American expansion did not stop on its western coast. Now the US government plans to buy Alaska in western Canada. The area was, at that time, a Russian colony with a limited population. America had a solid reason to buy Alaska. Russia wanted to sell Alaska because it was worthless. The United States feared that Britain might buy the area. You have already known about the Monroe Doctrine. According to the doctrine, the United States did not want the European powers to get new lands in North and South America. So the US government did not give the British any chance to buy Alaska. It offered to buy Alaska and make it part of the US territory. The US had already become a rich nation because of the gold rush. So a deal was signed in 1867. The US paid Russia $7.2 million. Alaska's 1.5 square kilometer area became part of the United States under this deal. When Alaska joined the United States, the country's boundaries were now touching Asia because only the Bering Strait separated it from Asia. This was the same strait that provided a land route for the first migrants from Asia to America. So now the US borders have extended to the farthest corner of North America. But now the US wanted to conquer the oceans. It wanted to establish a powerful naval base in the Pacific Ocean. An ideal location lay 4, 000 kilometers from the US coast. This location was Hawaii Island, but it was not part of the US. Hawaii was a free and sovereign state at that time. Local tribes ruled over this land. The US forced that state to allow a naval base. So it got permission to establish a naval base at Pearl Harbor. This is the same naval base that the Japanese targeted in World War II. 
So in 1887, the U.S. got permission to establish a naval base in Hawaii. Then the U.S. supported a rebellion in the state in 1893. The rebels overthrew the last queen of Hawaii. Seven years after this rebellion, the U.S. officially took over Hawaii. In this way, the 50-state America was formed. The United States of America. These 50 states are displayed on the American flag as stars. The Americans raised the same flag on the moon in 1969. So now this 50-state America is a powerful country. But as Mirza Ghalib said, a fault lies in my creation. The same thing happened with the US in the 19th century. America was not only expanding but also breaking from inside. One factor was destroying the United States. This factor started the Civil War in the mid-19th century. America broke into two parts. When a prisoner was taken to the gallows, he had a paper in his hand. The old prisoner was hanged. But the writing on the paper was proven right. America's future was written on this paper. But what was actually written on this paper? What was the simple machine that enslaved millions of human beings? Which weapons changed the world's military doctrine forever? We will show you all this in the next episode of History of America Season 2.